Hi everyone, it's Jo and I'm back for another tutorial with you and today we're going to be looking at a technique which we've covered already, herringbone stitch, flat herringbone stitch and if you have a look through you'll see we've made this beautiful bracelet just using size 8 Miyuki seed beads to do a flat herringbone bracelet and today we're going to look at doing the same stitch but using two hold beads and I've used the iris duos so that's what your flat herringbone looks like you can use super duos you can see how those super duos are a bit smaller than the iris duos and you can use the same technique to with quarter tilers and it's that lovely herringbone effect this is also a fabulous one if you have shied away from seed beads and thought, oh no, I can't cope with those teeny tiny little beads. These ones are all a decent size because I'm using size eight seed beads, that's the silver ones, and the iris duos, which are a really, really decent size. I just wanted to quickly add as well, I've had so many requests from a lot of you to say, please can you show us how to finish off a bracelet? So this one is unfinished. So I will be showing you towards the end of the video how to attach a clasp onto this bracelet. Before we get started, let's have a look at what we'll be using. So I've got some silver size 8 Miyuki seed beads here. My iris duos that I'm using are chalk white teal luster. There you can see the two holes. The iris duos have got a right side and a wrong side. So underneath they've got this flat edge. And if you flip them over, they're slightly more domed on the top. And if I pop it on its side, you can hopefully see the two drill holes there. Then you're going to need a clasp and I'm going to use a three looped slider clasp. So if I bring the bracelet in, you can see that it's a good match width wise to the width of the bracelet. You'll need a needle. Um, those of you who know me by now, I tend to stick with size 10s unless I'm using really teeny tiny 15s because the eye of the needle is easier to thread. You'll need a stopper bead and I've picked a bead that's completely different to anything that I'm using in the design so I don't get it muddled up. And you'll need some fire line. I'm using the crystal fire line, so the white. And I'm actually using a thicker one this time. I normally stick to the six pound, but because the holes in all these beads are very generous, you can afford to use some of your thicker fire line if you've got it hanging around in your stash. First things first, cut yourself a length of fire line. To make the bracelet, I worked with three meters, approximately three meters. If that's too much for you, work with a shorter length so that you don't get tangled up and you can always add in thread halfway through. And we're going to start by adding in our stopper bead. So you pick it up, move it down towards the end of your thread, leave yourself a 20 centimeter tail because you're going to use that tail to add on one side of your clasp at the end. Pass the needle back up through the stopper bead from the tail end to the top. And that just means now when you add on beads, nothing's going to fall off the end and you can just slide it off the end when you're done. So to get going, when we use the iris duos, we're going to be using them horizontally or picking them up horizontally. So we're going to have a left hand, left hand hole and a right hand hole. So I'll be referring to the left and the right. So we're going to start by picking up one of the Miyuki 8s, come up through the left hand side of an iris duo, Another Miyuki. Make sure your iris duos are sitting the correct way and with the right side facing you and come up through the left hand side of your second iris duo and one more size eight and let them drop down to your stopper bead. So that's what I have so far. I'm now going to be turning and beading back through the right hand holes, which are empty at the moment of these iris duos. So to turn my corner, I'm gonna pick up two more of my size eight seed beads and just pass the needle down through the empty hole 
of that iris duo. And you'll see that those three size eight beads form a neat little edge on the top there. Now it's herringbone stitch, so we're gonna be picking up two beads at a time. This is our initial row and we're ready to go now. So you're always gonna pick up a size eight first. Now I'm beading back down through the iris duos. So when I pick my iris duo up, I'm coming from the top end through that left hand hole again. And I'm gonna pass the needle through the size eight seed bead. Get that untangled. So I've come through the eight. Before I pick up any more seed beads, I'm gonna pass the needle through the right hand hole of that very first iris duo. Now I'm ready to pick up two more before I pass through the remaining size eight seed bead. So I'm gonna pick up one eight, and remember, you're coming down through the left hand hole of your iris duo. Make sure you've got it facing the right way. And pass the needle through the size eight seed bead, not through your stopper bead as well. In the beginning here, it's a little tricky and fiddly because there's not a lot to hold on to. So now I'm turning the corner to bead the other way. I'm going to pick up two of my size eights and pass through the empty hole of the iris duo. Now, picking up two beads, a size eight, and I'm beading the opposite direction. So I'm going through the iris duo from the base to the top. I'm going to pass through the size eight seed bead and through the empty hole of the next iris duo. Can you see how it's pulling it into place now? Time to pick up two more. So that's a size eight. And I'm moving that one around. I don't really like the shape of it. It's a bit deformed. So passing up through the left hand hole of your iris duo and through the size eight seed bead. And we're ready to turn and bead back towards yourself. So I'm going to pick up two eights. You can see how this is becoming repetitive now. Through the right hand hole, beading down through the iris duo. There's my repeated neat little edge on top of the iris duo. Pick up your two beads, so it's one eight, and we're beading down through the left hand side of an iris duo and pass through the next eight, the silver bead getting a bit easier now because there's a bit more to hold on to. Before you pick up any beads, you need to pass through the empty hole of the next iris duo, which is the right hand hole. Ready to pick up two more, a size eight, and you're beading down through the left hand side of an iris duo and pass through the size eight seed bead. Hopefully I'm going slow enough so that you can actually be doing this with me, but remember you can always pause at any stage or rewind and, and have a look again. So now we're ready to turn and bead away from ourselves, but to make that neat little edge, we're gonna pick up two size eight seed beads and pass through the empty right hand hole of our iris duo. Now we're ready to continue, we're gonna pick up two beads, one eight, and we're beading up through the iris duo and through that size eight seed bead that's sitting there. 
Before we pick up any more beads, we're going to pass through the empty right hand hole of the next iris duo. And we need two more to complete this row. So one eight and up through the left hand hole of the iris duo and through the eight at the top. Ready to turn and bead back to your wards yourself again. You can see now, now you're doing the mantra. Pick up two to turn the corner through the right hand hole of your iris duo. Pick up two, bead down through the left hand hole of your iris duo and pass through the eight. And before you pick up any more beads, you pass through the empty hole of the next iris duo. Pick up your two beads. Got this one here, but it's the odd shape. And you bead through the next 8 0. So that is how you're going to continue until you've got a strip long enough to go around your wrist or the, the wrist of the person that you're making the bracelet for. But remember to stop short to allow for the width and the way you're going to attach the number of beads that you use to attach your clasp. Otherwise you're going to have a cuff bracelet that's really loose and these are much better if they're a snug fit around your wrist. So here we have my strip of beaded iris duos and before I show you how to attach the clasp I just want to show you or see that you notice that here's my tail thread with my stopper bead bottom left hand corner. Here's my finishing off thread top right hand corner so opposite ends and this means that I've got an even edge on both sides so you want to finish at the opposite end to where you started. Now we're going to attach this clasp that has three connection points so three loops that will act as my connecting points and before I start I'm just going to line my clasp up so that I can see, gauging by eye, where I'm going to make those attachment points. So I can see that this is first top point, or the top loop is going to attach on this top iris duo. The middle loop is going to probably attach to this size 8 seed bead here. And the bottom loop is going to attach to this iris duo that I'm pointing to here. So always just gauge where you're going to be attaching so you know where you're beading through to and where you're going to stop. And we're going to attach this very simply because I don't want to use too many beads. This strip is perfect, a neat fit around my wrist. So I'm going to pick up one size eight and I'm going to come through the top loop. I'm coming from the back to the front and I'm keeping the clasp closed. That way there's no way I'm going to muddle up and attach the left hand end the wrong way around so that the two parts don't slide into each other. So I've come through the clasp and I'm going to pick up one more eight and I'm going to pass the needle back through the same hole of the iris duo and through that first size eight on the top. And I want to pull it quite tight so that there's no thread showing. Now I'm basically going to follow the thread path till my thread is exiting from my next attachment point. So I'm going to come through those two size eights and down through the iris duo and out through this size 8 which is going to form my second attachment point for the loop. Now there's a bit more of a gap. The distance from the tip of that iris duo to the loop was a lot closer than the distance of the size 8 to that loop so I'm going to pick up two size 8s this time and again come through the second loop from the back to the front Pick up two more size eights and I'm going to go straight back 
through that size, same size 8. So there I have two points attached. Now I need to bead through till I'm exiting the iris bead at the base, which is going to form my third connection point. If you were just attaching a toggle clasp, you would line it up probably some, obviously, somewhere in the middle. So these two rows of iris duos here are my middle row, and you would attach probably from the eight and come back in to the base of the iris duo if you were just having one attachment point. Right, so now I'm back to a stage where the iris duo is a lot closer to the loop, so I'm just picking up one and I'm passing it through the loop from the back to the front. One more size eight and I'm going to come back through the same iris duo. So there is one part of my clasp attached without too much fuss because I didn't want to elongate the length of the bracelet any further. Now you just need to end off your thread. So I'm going to pass through the other hole of the iris duo through a size eight and I'm now going to do a, a double half hitch. So I've taken my needle under the thread that's passing between the iris duo and the eight. Form a loop with my thread and pass the needle back through the loop. That is a half hitch. To do it, make it a double, you've got to do that twice. So there you go, the needle back again underneath the thread bridge. Form a loop and pass the needle through the loop. That's a double half hitch. I always pass through the bead again. That's a long side because that's going to pull my hole into the bead. It also means that when I trim off my thread, I have no risk of burning straight through the thread or through the knot and everything coming undone. Now if you want to be doubly sure and extra safe, you can do that double half hitch a couple of times. So I'm coming through and I'm going to do a double half hitch here. So I've gone under the thread bridge, form a loop, take the needle through the loop and do that again. Pass the needle under the thread bridge, form a loop, pass the needle through the loop, and pull tight and there's your double half hitch and then pass through the bead and I'm going to actually come up through another one. Passing through a bead each time means that there's going to be no thread showing. Then you can use your scissors or your thread zapper to just zap off that thread and there you've got one end attached. So you need to now slide your stopper bead off this end and you can see how easily it just slides off the end. Attach your needle onto this end of the thread, bring the two sides round and you're going to attach exactly the same way as you did on the other side. So I'll come back to you when I've got that ready. And here you have both ends attached and because I attached the clasp as one rather than two separate bits, I know that I've got the right end to slide into the other end and I haven't flipped it around and landed up with two wrong sides together. So there you have your flat herringbone using two whole beads. Now remember, you can do exactly the same using super duos. If you don't have iris duos, you can do exactly the same technique using the, the super duos. The super duos are a lot smaller so if I pop that on there, you can see that there's very little in the width, but you can see that I've used one, two, three, four super duos to the two iris duos to get that kind of width. And then remember, you can do it with your quarter tilers as well. So you've got a lot of different beads that you can try this one out with don't have to rush out and buy something new. I'm sure you've got one of those shapes in your stash already. Have a go. Let me know how you get on either by leaving me a comment below or pop along to my Facebook page, Joe Barclay Logie Handmade Jewelry. Post me a picture and then we can all see how you've got along. Any questions, just shout in the comments below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks for watching. Bye.